In one of the most monumental undertakings in modern British history, the military recently deployed 9,000 personnel to be a part of the official pageantry of the recent coronation ceremony. This ceremonial engagement is the largest of its kind in more than 70 years and required meticulous planning and preparation. It was certainly a breathtaking sight to behold, but some observers are questioning whether the showcase of the military, relatively anachronistic in the context of modern warfare, was an appropriate use of forces and resources. At the same time, recruitment to the armed forces is falling, leading some to wonder if the display of ancient military traditions, such as plume-wearing members of the horse-mounted household cavalry and military bands, is feasible in the current landscape of war, which relies more heavily on technology and remote-controlled devices. The size of the deployment for the coronation far exceeded that of other more recent military operations, like the Sudan and Afghanistan evacuations, which cannot be said to be a waste of resources, but the long-term effects of such displays on recruitment and military innovation remain to be seen. The military was able to exercise their strength in numbers with over 4,000 personnel taking part in the procession that led King Charles back to Buckingham Palace in addition to the 19 military bands. Operation Golden Orb was carried out with impressive organization and coordination, due in part to the strategy planned by Garrison SGT Maj Vern Stokes, which ensured all 19 processional bands maintained the same beat across the mile-long route. Despite the sporadic rain, the Army still demonstrated strength and power, with a fly pass from the RAF and display from the Red Arrows. As a former paratrooper observed, such grand military displays break down barriers between the public and the military, uniting the people in support of their country's armed forces. The British military has traditionally not deployed modern weapons at events such as this under the notion that exhibiting nuclear missiles or tanks is more akin to authoritarian regimes. On the flip side, however, Ukrainians have relied heavily on drone technology in the nation's 15-month-long war, technology which the British have started to embrace as the current recruitment advert featuring a female soldier using a small robot drone would imply. So the question remains, is it realistic to have traditional military processions at the heart of the army while simultaneously demanding that they be innovative and modern? What young? Aspiring soldiers will see the spectacle of marching bands and mercenaries out of uniform and view it as an inspiring example of a career in the military. How can the military strike a balance between traditional show of strength and modern, innovative weaponry? These are certainly questions that the British military must answer in the coming years if it wants to remain both a powerful force and a viable career opportunity.